Good morning, world. This is Dr. Rico Short, the Root Canal, specialist to the stars, the Grace Life teacher, the inspirational motivator for you on this thankful Thursday. Man, I have a powerful word to share with you, and it's been bothering my spirit, man, and I'm just going to jump right in, man. How many guys out there right now have peace? I'm talking about peace in your home, peace in your marriage, peace in your business, peace in your job, peace everywhere. I can promise you, no one in the world have peace in every area of their lives. <laughs> Not now, because there's so much going on. You know, so much going on dealing with this coronavirus still. There's so much going on in businesses. There's so much going on in our politics, in our government, in the news. But today, I want to encourage you. And I want to give you some keys on how to passionately pursue peace. Passionately pursue peace. See, Jesus was passionate about a lot of things. And one of the things Jesus was passionate about was peace. And it's not the peace that the world gives us. It's not a peace that's in your bank account. It's not a peace where you rank on the social economic scale. It's not a peace based on the kind of car you drive. It's not the peace based on the neighborhood you live in. No. See, Jesus wants to give us a peace that past understanding, a peace that if we don't have, as my grandmother used to say, a pot to piss in or a winner to throw it out of, we have that peace. Because, beloved, peace is the most important asset you can possess. I'm going to repeat that for the people still sleeping in the back. I'm going to repeat that for the people who just tuning in right now. If you don't listen to nothing else I got to see around the world, peace is your most important asset. Shalom. Because once you got peace, once peace is deeply rooted in you, you can't be Move. You become like the roots of a palm tree. Those roots grow so deep in the ground when the hurricane comes, when the wind blows. Guess what happened? Those roots will sustain that palm tree. And that palm tree will be able to sway back and forth, almost bending to the ground. But it won't be uprooted. And see, the world can't give you this kind of peace. The only person that can give you this kind of peace is Jesus Christ himself. Because we can search for everything. We can have everything. We can have a million dollars in our bank account. But what good is that if your marriage is falling apart? I know people, and we've seen people that have billionaires. They're billionaires. Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos. They have all this money, but they don't have peace in their marriage. I'm going to let that sit and marinate. Some of you guys out there chasing money, you think money is going to solve your problem. These are billionaires. And you see what money didn't solve? It did not solve a relational problem. It did not solve their marital problem because they need the peace of God. They need the peace that Jesus Christ came to give us. And we have to employ peace. You know what employ peace means? See, when you employ peace, that means you have to make peace work on your behalf. You have to make peace come out of the woodwork. And how do you do that? It's by prayer, praise, and petition. Come on, Holy Spirit. How do you make peace come available in your life? It's by prayer praise and petition. So let's talk about prayer. So prayer is simply having a communication with God. Prayer is simply asking God for those things of your heart, not just a materialistic thing. One of the things I pray and ask God every day I try to is two things. It's wisdom and it's favor. Two things I ask God for and two things I, wanna, I want to employ you, I want to ask you to ask God for is wisdom and favor because if you have wisdom and favor that's a key to peace and it doesn't have to be a long elaborate prayer say God I love you God I trust you I thank you that Jesus is the key to open every door in my life whatever I'm facing right now give me wisdom 
and give me favor. Two things, beloved. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you're an endodontist like me. I don't care if you're a dentist like me, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, a teacher. I don't care if you're a janitor. It doesn't matter. Ask God to give you wisdom and favor. The second thing is praise. You have to learn how to praise. I see you, Jay Sal. I see you, Sana. You have to learn how to praise even in the midst of trouble. <laughs> that'll preach right there on its own. If you throw that in the corner, that'll stand up by itself. You have to learn how to praise in the midst of the trouble. And a lot of us, instead of us praising in trouble, we agree with the trouble. Well, I'm in trouble right now. I'm just going to agree. I'm going to be stressed out. I'm going to be full of anxiety and cares. God did not call us to be full of anxiety and cares. In fact, he says we should cast our cares and anxiety on Jesus. Jesus didn't come to this world for us to carry cares. Jesus did not go through all that hell and sacrifice and all that stuff just for nothing. He did that for us. He did that for you. He did that for me. He did that for the whole world. He did that for humanity. So if we don't cast our cares on Jesus, you carrying them on yourself. Or you're not designed to carry the cares of the world. You're not even designed to carry the cares that you experience tonight right now. No, God wants us to cast those cares at Jesus' feet. And when we do that, we start praising. And praising, I'm not saying just run around. I'm not saying necessarily jump up and shout. I'm talking about praising is having an attitude of gratitude. See, praise is just simply thanking God for his promises and thanking God that what he said is gonna come to pass in your life. That's it. Now you can have an expression of praise. You can listen to praise and worship music like I do. You can sing, you can shout, you can stomp, you can dance, you can believe at it as if you've already have it. And those are great things. But really, praise is just agreeing with God and what God said is true about you. And what God said is true about your situation. And also, petition. See, you petition God. Have everybody have to deal with a situation? You have to sign a petition. You have to, you have to sign it. You send it around to many different people. <laughs> I've dealt with petitions before. But God wants us to petition him. God wants us to worry him. God wants us to keep nudging him about the same thing over and over again. There's a scripture in the Bible where it talked about a lady who was going through a crisis in her life and there's a judge and the judge wasn't even a a, a, a a godly man but this lady kept worrying this judge all day and all night and you know what the judge did he got by his bed in the middle of the night he said man get that lady what she want and Jesus gave us that parable so if Jesus gave us that parable that means we should not stop quote unquote worrying God we should not stop asking God of what we want and you got to remember man the promises of Jesus is yes and amen so just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean it's not going to happen sometimes it's not yet sometimes it means move forward sometimes it means take a break sometimes it means I'm, pa I'm passionately caring about you so much I'm holding you into the waiting room have you ever have you, see I've been on television before and I've been on radio and I've been on all that there's a something called the green room the green room is when they get you ready to go on air the green room is when they powder you up the green room is where you get prepared to go live and some of you guys right now feel like God isn't moving on your behalf come on Holy Spirit with this you know why come on come on y'all listen to me it's because you're in the green room You're in the green room. God is powdering you up. God is giving you a mic check. God is, God is allowing people to tune in. You know how some people wait on Instagram, say, I'm going to wait till I get a few more followers to tune in? <laughs> what if I told you God is doing that for you right now? That's why you haven't seen yourself getting thrust forward yet. It's because God could have you in the green room. He's getting you ready. He's getting you ready. And that's a word for somebody right now. The way you passionately pursue peace is simply praise, 
petition, prayer, and also sometimes just waiting. Waiting in that agreement, man. I've been praying for things, man, for years. I've been praying for God to break through at Apex and Adonics, my office, for years. I've been praying for God to break through in my finances for years. I've been asking God to break through in my marriage for years and take me to that next level. And God has fa been faithful. And he's doing it. And every time I break through one place, guess what? God shows me there's another level. So there's another level for you, beloved. There's another level in your relationship with your wife or your husband. There's another relationship in your finances. There's another relationship in your business, on your job, even in your church, even as a pastor. Don't settle. Don't settle. And I don't know why I went way on this side. I guess somebody need to hear this. Don't settle where you are. Again, I'm not saying don't be grateful where you are. Be grateful. But don't settle because God has more in store for you. Do you hear what I'm saying? God has more in store for you. Caleb was 80 years old and he said, God, I still want my mountain. I want to be 80 years old and still be like, God, you still have more for me. You still have more in store for me. More in store for my family, more in store for my business. Not only that, you have more in store for my children's children. Did you know God want to bless you generationally? God wants you to leave inheritance for your children's children, 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 children. Woo, man, if Jesus don't come back, God want to bless you in five to 5,000 generations. Is it because of you? It's because you planted that seed. You planted the word of God. You, 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 you did not move from the promises of what God said. And in the midst of all that, you stay in peace pursue peace don't pursue the things of the world pursue peace when you pursue peace and ask god for wisdom and favor everything will be added to you jesus said seek ye first what what did he say the kingdom of god and his righteousness not your righteousness not the kingdom that you want to build his kingdom and his righteousness and what all these things will be what added to you you don't have to look for these things. These things will chase you down and run you over. Again, I'm not saying being lazy about those things. No, we have to be actively, we have to actively pursue peace. And when God opens the door, we have to actively walk through the door. But walk through it in peace. Peace is your most precious possession in your business, in your marriage, with your relationships, with your children, with your coworkers, with your friends peace pursue peace because once you got peace i'm talking about the peace that god gives in your heart guess what your situation will change it won't be the same because either your situation is going to change or guess who's going to change that i think is the most important you and i we're going to change are you ready today i'm ready to pursue peace if you got something out of this like i always say share this message Love you. I'm praying for you. Go and check out uh, my YouTube page. Subscribe to my YouTube page and get encouraged. Check out my books. I got two books out there. In the Eye of a Storm, 45 Days of Turbulence and Peace and Getting to the Root of Your Problem. I promise you it will bless you all around the world. Grace Life. Love y'all. Peace.